McDermott, and uh, if you've seen anybody like him, either as a college coach or you know, who's, who is he similar to? Uh, I like McDermott a lot. Uh, he's just, you know, he's a coach's son, savvy, really plays hard, Midwest kid, tough, uh, all the stuff. I mean, he's first team All American as picked going into this thing. And even Allen said that going to that uh, USA basketball deal, when he walked in, he really hadn't, didn't really know who he was. And after a little while, he said, whoa, this guy's good. He's a good player. I mean, he's, he's, Six eight, and he's strong, and he plays inside, outside. He's tough. Uh, he's just—he's just a really good basketball player. You know, I mean, everybody wants to, of course, translate it to the next level, and I have no idea what that—what that's going to be. But as all I know is he's a really good college basketball player. And how do you attempt to defend him, or how, how do you? you know, well, you—you you know, he—the uh, the one thing about it is they do go to him. I mean, it's not like they. It would be a tough assignment for any one guy consistently because he plays outside, he plays inside. If you play small on him, he'll post you. If you play big on him, he'll take you outside. They run double flares for him. They run a lot of stuff for him. Uh, but it is by no means is it just him. Uh, Ekineche is, is a load inside as a fifth year guy. He's very physical. Uh, so they've got him as well. So they've got two really good low post guys. And it, as I say, McDermott will play away from the basket. But, uh, you know, Craig's done a really nice job. They're just they're a good basketball team with good spacing and good parts. And they love to play. They love to play hard. And uh, it's, it's, it's good to see. You had a question of really picking your poison like one guy. Well, you can't let McDermott go off because he's, I mean, he can get 30, he can get 40. I mean, he's, he, you can't, you got to minimize him, but yet you know he's going to, he's going to score. So it, it's not a question of trying to shut him out. It's just trying to minimize him as best you can, but you can't, you can't let the others go off. They've, I mean, they've, they've got a great shooting team. Uh, they really shoot the ball. You look at their three point percentage, uh, 40, 42% as a team. That's pretty doggone good. And they, they, uh, they got a bunch of guys that can shoot the ball. Uh, the Gibbs kid is like third in the country, was one in the country in assist to turnover ratio. Doesn't turn it over. He's really good. He's placed three, but he's their backup one. So they got a pretty solid team. I mean, they're able, they, they score a lot of points. Are you going to throw a lot of people at Mike, or are you going to get someone assignment at McDermott? Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, we're, you know, I mean, it's two. It's what is it? A Tuesday? Yeah. We haven't really uh, figured out. We had a couple hours this morning. Just kind of ran up and down. Got a sweat going. Uh, I don't imagine. You know, one of the problems we had with Las Vegas. We knew Las Vegas played this way. Is they isolate guys. They try to find mismatches. They try to get a guy they think can play against a guy in. in in isolation situations, and we had some problems. It was a hard, hard team to get help uh, with a couple of their guys, and uh, this is more of a conventional type basketball team that plays with screens and movement and cuts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you never want to leave your guys out on an island with a great player. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So, uh, how you do that, you know, you remains to be seen. Would it be plausible to? Imagine when McDermott plays inside, and you have your people there try to defend him. When he goes out in the perimeter, it'd be some different people. Yeah, but when he's on a perimeter, it's more of an isolation type thing. I mean, you can get help, but you, you know, you, you try to bring people so he can't beat you off the dribble uh, and have people in a weak side ball you man situation inside. Uh, you know, a lot of people will run a, a monster, but as I mentioned, Ekinetch, <laughs> if, if you try to if you try to V back with a guard on him, he's a big, strong kid. He's six nine, two sixty, and he's a man. I mean, he's a load. So you're gonna get in trouble with that. So uh, you're gonna have to be careful what you do. It's not like they're one dimensional. It's just right now McDermott's on a roll, and uh, is a guy they feel very comfortable with. Plays a lot of minutes, and uh, so. Um, we'll have to figure out the best way to try to minimize him, knowing full well that he's going to have, that he's going to get some. Mike, can you relate to? I mean, your son, you never coach your son, but he's on your staff. Can you relate to 
coaching your own son and what that must be like and what that is? Um, it probably wouldn't have been good for me to coach him. Uh, you know, I, I, I will say this, it's probably more fun to coach someone when he's a first team All-American. Probably makes a lot of decisions. I, I worked for a guy at Boise that had his son who was a very, very good player. And, uh, you know, Bus Connor and Steve Connor. And uh, it's hard. I mean, it can be hard. If, you're, if your kid's not really good, uh, you know, you can have some issues <laughs> because other players uh, think that you might be deferring to him and, you know, hey, he's getting all the shots and, I, you know, I mean, it can be a problem. But when you're as good as, as, uh, as Doug McDermott is, I, I don't think there, and, and plus he's a, just a tough, you know, hard-nosed guy, he's not prima donna that, you know, he'll, he'll go do the work. He'll go get the ball off the board. He'll get on the floor after a loose ball. So I'm sure that really helps. Plus they've had success. So he almost has to be star of the team or the guy at the end of the bench, you know, just guy in the middle or something. Sort of. Yeah, it really does because if you're playing a guy in front of somebody else and they're close, I mean, it's obviously the way you're playing him because he's your son. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget Al McGuire's comment. He said, you know, I like you. You're a good basketball player, but I love my son. And there's probably some truth to that. But as I say, in this situation, it doesn't make any difference. He can say, you know, I love my son, which is obvious, but he's also the best player in his team and can help us win. Now you, you're sounding very enthusiastic as you're talking about McDermott. Are your players similarly uh, enthused about playing against this team, against this guy? It's Tuesday in the middle of finals, John. <laughs> So we are nowhere close to having any of those types of discussions where, you know, what I've said was, in my opinion, Creighton is the best of the three teams we will have faced in this stretch. Uh, they did beat Wisconsin. So I think that probably proves that. And uh, so I, I think there is that element and uh, that much they know. But right now we're just trying to survive in the classroom and get that behind us and then get on with the next thing. Is uh, is Justin not playing at quite the same level he did early? And am I just perceiving that, or what's your opinion? On well, that? I, I think that the thing that you kind of have to recognize is that we're not perfect, and that as people start to scout, they're going to force us to go to. I mean, just like we would try to do. Uh, you know, if, if we could have found a way to take Anthony Bennett out of that game, for example, if there was a way to help where he catches the ball, uh, would they have had enough other people to be able to do enough? I don't know. Jones has his best game of the year by far, and they were shots that you really can't do much about, you know. So, um, you know, they played in that particular game, they played him very well. and. Uh, all of our guys have to get better. There are things that we have to do better. We have to be more attentive to block offs. We have to, we can't turn the ball over for layups. There's just things that we need to do better. We're going to turn it over. Uh, we're not going to get every rebound, but we've got to get better at those things. And we've been exploited a little bit in the last couple of games by real good teams that were able to take advantage of that. So. That's just part of maturation and getting to be, uh, you know, obviously it would help keep Allen out of foul trouble. You know, we had him in, in the game nine months, nine minutes first half and uh, missed 11 free throws. We're not going to be ahead of most people under those circumstances, I wouldn't think. So we've got to get smarter and we've got to get, we're working every day on the post guys catching the ball. We're working every day on trying to block off and react to the ball. Um, but, you know, sometimes you, got, you play against teams that are quicker than you are or more explosive, and you, then you have to be more fundamentally sound. So they did a really good job off pick and rolls, and that's something we're going to need to get better at. Do you think your free throw shooting was just an aberration for that? <clears throat> um, generally, free throw shooting has a little bit to do with who's shooting them. You know, I'd, I'd really take my chances with Justin and Allen uh, for two shooting the ball. Uh, we had, had some others involved in shooting. I mean, I think Richard was 0 for 4, and, uh, you know, so there was a little bit of that. Uh, but I, I don't know. We, we, uh, we didn't practice in the gym that week. I doubt that that had much to do with it, but 
you know, we really hadn't shot in the gym all week. And um, I think probably that thing snowballs a little bit where you, uh, you miss a couple and then it gets into your head a little bit, certainly with some guys. I don't think it would, again, with Allen and Justin. If they miss one or two, I don't think that's going to affect them long range. But we've got some others that have actually shot them pretty well, but that if all of a sudden you did miss a few, might start to snowball on them a little bit. Certainly, uh, Richard has shot better this year. Than has like shot the ball better. That's what I, he's, yeah. he's probably what I'm referring to. That um, Brandon um, seems to um, have a lot of confidence. Does he have too much confidence sometimes? You know, I, I expect so much of Brandon because he's a smart player. I think he's putting himself in tough situations, and I need for him to, you know, I, I, again, I've said this so many times, he doesn't need to score. And, uh, you know, it's hard on him. I mean, I went over and said something to him, and he says, Coach, I can make a layup, you know, and, and, uh, and he's right, he can. But some of the shots he's taken are tough in traffic shots where they're not really layups. There, there's, there's people there. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's certainly entitled to make a mistake like anybody else. It's just I kind of hope, you know, that he's the one guy I can count on to make the right decision all the time. And uh, he's gotten himself into some tough situations on drive to the baskets and probably a pretty tough shots. But he is very quick, and he's gotten to the basket and made those plays some. So, uh, you know, what you'd like for anybody is to make good plays more often than, than, than not. And... Sometimes they seem to glare a little bit and stand out as compared to others. So you're holding him to a slightly higher standard? Just in terms of his knowledge of the game and his leadership, yeah. Is he trying to do too much, maybe? You said I think getting, sometimes. In, getting in tough situations? Yeah, I think sometimes. I think he is uh, it's, it's like the dinner table. You know, your eyes get bigger in your stomach, and you, you think you can eat more, and you know, so your plate gets real big, and you can't do all that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, if you go in, you think you have a, uh, you think you have a Lane, and all of a sudden there, there's a monster standing there, you know. And you go, uh oh, and I've told him, you know, if you go in, uh, don't be afraid to just dribble right on through and find an open guy. You know, last year, Creighton's ranked toward the bottom of the world in uh, opponents' field goal percentage. Looks like they've improved uh, quite a bit so far this year in the small sample. Uh, yeah, they're still scoring. I mean, they're still a scoring machine. They still, that's kind of what they're doing. Uh, any team that's been together is going to get better defensively. I mean, any coach, Craig included, is saying we got to get better defensively, we got to get better defensively. But at the same time, they have the capability of scoring a lot of points. Uh, they're scoring 81 points or something. So uh, they are better defensively. Uh, basically, I think what he tries to do, any coach looks and says, okay, what can we do with the people that we have? What's best to do? All right, we're not a pressing team. You know, Maybe we don't want to zone, so well, let's just play this way and try to minimize. They've gotten better at it. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to execute and score some points because we're going to have to because they're going to score some points. Yeah, uh, is there an update on uh, Craig Lowe? Not making much progress. It's very discouraging. Mm. The kid's really discouraged. Is there anything new on the injury, or is it just progressing slowly? Or? No, it's just progressing slowly. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, R Richard said he had an interesting comment uh, after the UNLV game. He said that doesn't asked, surprise me that Richard would have an interesting comment. <laughs> Someone asked uh, if if uh, they thought the Cal if he thought that Cal should be a good rebounding team, uh, and he basically said with three six ten guys they should be. Um, what do you think about that comment? Do you agree with him? Well, he's, that's company line. I mean, yeah. It's uh, out of the mouth of babes is what I say. I mean, being 6'10 doesn't mean that you go react to a ball, doesn't mean that you're quick off your feet, doesn't mean that you locate the ball and go get it naturally. There's a lot of instincts of rebounds. Uh, so one of the best rebounders I ever had was not a great jumper, didn't have very big hands but he had tremendous instincts for where the ball was going to go. He knew when the ball was shot where it was going to go, and he was always reacting to the ball. Kurt Rambis was one of the best offensive rebounders uh, that we've seen at 6'7", 6 6'8", six, because he had great instincts for reacting to the ball and going and get it. So there's a lot of things involved in rebounding. Being big certainly doesn't hurt, but it's not the end-all, be-all. There's other things involved. Reaction to ball. In basketball, speed and quickness is paramount. And your ability to 
get from point A to point B and react to a ball is really key. Uh, I mean, the block off in the last play was it was there. You know, the the kid was just quicker. He just moved quicker than we were able to sustain the block off. And if it had it hit the rim, it would have been over. But it didn't. It fell right in the guy's hands. And so it's like Murphy's law of all the things that could have gone wrong in that situation. So. We should be a better rebounding team. I don't think we react to the ball as well as we should, but we've also challenged our guards to be a part of the rebounding process. We've got to get them more involved. How do you match up with them on the glass, and how can you actually improve those? Very, very difficult. Those are somewhat natural things that, I mean, I could go into a quick twitch, slow twitch <laughs> type thing, but there's just such a thing as bang, react, and, and not react. It's just. It's, we all have different things that way. And that'd be one of the things that you, some people don't have to jump, they just react to the ball and they got great hands. Other people don't have very good hands and they react to just a lot of different things. You just keep working on it. You just keep uh, stressing the need to get it. I think sometimes there's the, uh, the idea that somebody else is gonna get it. And you know, what you really want to have is the idea that I've got to get it. You've got to have five guys thinking like, i got to get it. And if you have five guys thinking that way, you're generally going to get it. Uh, if you took away the break opportunities totally and said, look, we're not running, we're just, we just everybody got to go get the ball, that would be different. But we're trying to run, trying to get out and run, and so guys sometimes try to leak out, trying to get out the other way. All these are natural things that kids do. But you can't coach instincts, though, can you? Can't. Can you, can you teach them? Um, you try. There's, there's, I mean, there's things that, you know, Robert Thurman has made such unbelievable progress since he's been here. It's, it's been great. But Robert is not going to be a guy that reacts quickly to a ball. And so we, we know that, and you, you hope that, you know, you, you make up for some things with fundamentals. You make up some other things with team play, and you, you try to, Good all, good all your strengths and max all your weaknesses as best you can, knowing that everybody's got them. And you just you have to play to your strengths, not your weaknesses.